Good morning. Good to see you. Welcome to Youth Sunday here at First Presbyterian. My name is Keith. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. If this is your first time with us, welcome. Uh, we hope you feel at home if you're watching online. And um, again, we, we are really encouraged that you actually click on and, and, and watch. So uh, please feel a part of the worship. Uh, we're delighted and thank you for doing that. This is a very relaxed service and uh, there's coffee, there's water, there's juice out the back. There's little sticky, really sticky apple bites. If you fancy having those during the service, just get up and walk out, grab your coffee, grab your drinks, grab your thing, bring it back in again um, and enjoy that during the time. You'll see a little connection card in front of you. It would fill that in for us just so that we know um, who, who's here. If you have any prayers or anything you want to write on the back, please do that as well. And just drop it into the boxes at the back uh, with your offerings as you leave. Uh, just to remind everybody, we have a staff nursery. Um, and also, I don't, don't think we have really small, but Denise uh, would take any of the kids um, during the sermon up round to the back of the parlor. And no adults, you cannot leave during the sermon and go up to the parlor, all right? There's no escape in this, okay? You have to sit there. And if you go up there anyway, there's speakers, so uh, you'll be able to hear it all. But there's no, no escape. We're here to worship. We're ready to start. We're glad that our, some of our young people are with us this morning. And they're really excited to get up front. Every one of them loved getting up front and speaking. So we've bribed them with do donuts for after this service, and We've done everything that we can, and they're here. So um, settle the nerves, take a deep breath. You're among friends, you're among family. Uh, and I'm going to invite Libby Jackson uh, is going to come up, and Libby's going to read our first passage. I'm reading 1 John 5, verses 1 through 5. Every person who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah, is God-born. If we love the one who conceives the child, we'll surely love the child who was conceived. The reality test on whether or not we love God's children is this. Do we love God? Do we keep his commands? The proof that we love God comes when we keep his commandments, and they are not all troublesome. Every God-born person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. stand and let us worship.
41.10. I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you, you are my servant, serving on my side, I've picked you. I haven't dropped you, don't panic, I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I'll give you strength, I'll help you, I'll hold you steady, keep you a firm on keep a firm grip on you. I'm gonna sing Stand in Your Love. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I owe When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, and my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. presentation I don't even know where my guitar stand is here okay so everybody's going to get ready we're hoping that this will win an Oscar <laughs> um, but it's great it tells a story and Emily's going to narrate for us <laughs> we have lived through a strange and challenging year Doors were closed everywhere, and we were all told to stay home. How would we survive with online school, no in-person contact, and distance from friends and family?
We all felt as if we were on the game show Survivor. We faced challenges and we didn't know what was going to happen next. At times it felt as though we would fail. These were tough times. We all needed hope. We all needed to be strong to come out winners and here we are, we did it. We survived, some of us would even say we thrived <coughs> because we know that we can trust God. When we put our lives in his hands, we can get through life's biggest challenges. We are survivors, you all are survivors, and our prize is a new start, a new beginning, and a new purpose that God has planned for us. He knew that we were all winners in his eyes. Okay. After the death of Moses, the servant of God, God spoke to jo Joshua, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant is dead. Get going. Cross this Jordan River. You and all the people cross to the country I'm giving to the people of Israel. I'm giving you every square inch of the land you set your foot on, just as I promised, Moses. It's all yours, all your life. No one will give, no one will be able to hold out against you. In the same way I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength, courage. Don't get off track, either, le either left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. And don't for a minute let this book of revelations be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on, on it day and night. Make sure you practice everything written in it. And then you will get to where you're going. Then you'll succeed. Uh, haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage, don't be timid, don't get discouraged, God, your God, is with you every step you take. Okay, you can stop hiding behind the doors and come out now. It's funny, you know, Winston's going to stay here with me because we, we were practicing the other night. And this is how Winston came from behind the door. <laughs> Today we didn't go like that, you didn't, Winston? No. Let's watch this video. These have been challenging times, but the body of Christ has proven itself resilient. We've gathered in different ways, in different places, yet stood steadfast as the church. We have found peace in God's promise to never leave us or forsake us. In our separation, we have remained united. In our struggle, we have lived out our faith. In the midst of the unknown, we've leaned on the strength of an all-knowing God. Throughout history, the church has thrived in adversity, and this moment is no different. The power of God is unstoppable, His love unending, His grace unrelenting, His glory undeniable. Today, no matter where we gather, we remain God's people. 
Our mission has not changed. Our calling has not been altered. And nothing, absolutely nothing, will ever change that. We are the church, and today we stand resilient. Let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you that we stand here resilient survivors. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We ask now, Lord, that you would, you would challenge us and you would speak to our hearts. And Lord, that you would fill our, our lives and our hearts with joy as we celebrate life, as we celebrate you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's theme is all about Survivor. Anybody a fan and watch Survivor on TV? Let's have a show of hands. One, bless us, it's a real popular show when nobody watches it here. Come on. Oh. I survived. That's, you, know, you never know what's coming. It's like Survivor, you never know what's going to happen. You can fall off. You can fall off and not know what to do other than sit here and think, hmm, that could have gone differently. And when you're on the show of Survivor, things can go differently. If you haven't watched it, let me give you a little synopsis. They're ready to go into season 41, all right? Season, this is how popular it is. Season 41, and we have a handful of people here watch it. There's time to catch up. If you want to do some binge watching, watch Survivor on, on yeah, demand. That's, yeah. So you're not all familiar with it, but 16 people are divided into two tribes. They're placed on a remote, deserted location, usually an island. And they're allowed to take one luxury item of choice with you. Many people will take things like a pillow or a hairbrush. Some even a stuffed animal. Now, I don't know about that being a luxury item, but it's something just to keep them sane in the midst of all this. They have to survive off the land. And they take part in difficult physical and mental challenges. And at the end of each episode, one person is voted off the island. And at the end of the season, you're left with one person who is the ultimate survivor. And they win a prize of $1 million. If you see what they go through, they deserve a prize of $1 million. But today in our presentation with the young people, we were painting a picture of what it was like in the past year for them and for all of you. It's been like being on that show, Survivor. We have faced challenges. We have felt alone. We felt isolated at times, not right? But today, here we are. We're here. We've made it. We are survivors. We're all winners. Nobody wants to get abandoned. Nobody wants to get left alone on a desert island. But sometimes through this whole year of pandemic, it felt as if we were alone, right? It felt as if there was nowhere to turn. And we can actually go a bit crazy because we, we don't get any social interaction. We weren't meeting with people. The first time we were able to leave our homes and see other people face to face and almost touch them, if we have an arm long enough to reach six foot, we were able to touch someone. It was so exciting. I heard a story once about a man who was shipwrecked. He was on a desert island. And sadly, this man was the only person that survived the shipwreck. So he had to struggle, a bit like Survivor, to, to get food, to build himself a home. But he was lonely on this deserted island. And some years later, a ship came passing by, and they saw a little bit of smoke coming up from this little building on the beach. They headed in to see who it was, and the captain seeing that there was three little houses sitting on the beach. And they stepped off to find this, this lonely man, this man who was on his own, so excited to see them. 
coming running towards them. And the captain said to the man, he shook hands with him, and he looked around and he said, where are the others? And the man said, there are no others. There's just me. And the captain said, but there's three houses here. There's three huts. Oh, the man said, the, the hut in the middle with the smoke in is where I live. And the hut on the left-hand side is where I go to church. And the captain said, well, what about the building on the right-hand side? He said, well, that's the place I used to go to church in, but I had a problem with it, and I had to move. You see, we can get a bit stir-crazy, can't we? Things build up in our lives. We don't know how we're going to survive. We can even fall out with ourselves at times. But there's one thing that this year has taught me, and I hope it has taught you as well. If we stay focused, if we stay living lives of hope and counting the blessings in our lives, we get through. To be a survivor, we have to have hope. We have to have hope. It's the only thing that we can hold on to because that hope gives us a purpose. And I think for many of us through this time, we have discovered that God is saying different things to his people, to his church. And he's calling us to be different. He's calling us not just to be survivors, but to be overcomers to actually thrive with him, to actually get to the end and to win. To become an overcomer, we have to allow God's Holy Spirit to fill our lives. We can't do it on our own. We can't make it on our own. You know, life throws so many obstacles and so many challenges our way. But let me remind you of the words that we read earlier in Joshua 1. I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength and courage. And it finishes off by saying in the passage, God, your God is with you every step of the way. God has been with us every step of the way. That's why we're survivors. That's why we're overcomers. Because God has walked with us. Please, if you think you've got through all this because you're some superhuman being and you've just been able to do it, stop. We have got through it because of God's grace and God's mercy and God's love. The Holy Spirit has helped us to empower us to get through. So many obstacles thrown our way. The challenges that our young people have faced have been enormous in their education, in their social interaction, in their sports. It's been real challenging. Any parents here will, will know how challenging it is when you tell your, your young people, you can't go out, you can't meet your friends. And then there's those immortal words that all parents will say, but you can just stay at home and play video games. Nothing is like, we're going, can you stay at home and do some homework, do some schoolwork? But it's really hard, really difficult. We're not sure how we're going to, to manage. But look where we are today. We have made it. There's still challenges ahead. God never left us abandoned and shipwrecked on a desert island. He never left us on, his own, on our own. He was with us. He stood with us. He stayed with us. My hope and prayers are that we have learned an awful lot through this last year. That life is full of difficulty and challenges. But this was an opportunity to experience and to understand fully how much God loves us and how much he's with us. We have victory through Jesus, my friends. 
In Jesus, we have all the resources we need, not just to survive, but to thrive. I don't believe that as Christians, we should be surviving. We should be thriving. That's what God calls us. He calls us to thrive spiritually. And when we thrive spiritually, our lives become amazing because God's in control. And it all starts with us accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's, see, that's where it starts. Without him in our lives, we're running on empty. We've talked about that before. We're running on empty. We're running on fumes. We're running about without a purpose. We don't know what direction to turn. We don't know what to do. We have to, first of all, believe in Jesus. We have to believe that Jesus died for our sins. We have to accept him as Lord and Savior. You know, you don't take part in a show like Survivor or any of those reality shows if you don't think you've got what it takes. I would never survive on Survivor. Never. I couldn't do the challenges. There wouldn't be good food for me to eat, which would be a big problem. Although there's plenty of stuff stored up. But that's so, you know, I just wouldn't do it. Nobody goes on these shows to make a fool. Well, I don't think they do. They make a fool. They think they can get through it. They think they can win. They believe in themselves. My friends, for us as God's family, as his children, as those who say we believe and we follow him, if we had as much belief in Jesus as those people have in themselves, we would change the world. You see, we have to believe in who we are in Christ. We are winners. We're winners because Jesus has given us the ultimate victory. You become an overcomer by trusting and exercising faith. That's when we become the ultimate winner. And the ultimate winner is always Jesus. It's always Jesus. If we could just show the, tru the truth and trust and faith that the likes of Abram had when he went to the mountain to sacrifice his son, or like Peter when he stepped out onto the water, or like Joshua when he placed his foot in the flooded river Jordan, or even like a young girl called Mary who said yes to God and became the earthly mother of Jesus, the Son of God. None of those decisions were easy. Being a Christian is not an easy life. It's not supposed to be. But we will survive it because we have the victory in Jesus. If decisions were easy, have you ever thought of the season? If decisions were easy, we wouldn't have to have any faith. If everything just fell into place, we wouldn't have to have any faith. For us as believers, we're reminded in 1 John 4 and verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So powerful. He is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus has victory. If we're born again, if we've accepted Jesus into our lives, we're going to be overcomers as we trust and grow in our faith. We have the victory already given to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Easter's not that long over. We remember the sacrifice, remember his resurrection. Victory was won. Our challenge is now to live every day in the light of that victory that has already been won for us. Zig Ziglar puts it this way. He told this story about having a few friends over to watch the Dallas Cowboys play ball. I had to ask myself, who ever watches the Dallas Cowboys play ball? Because from what I know, they haven't played much ball in the seven years that I've been here. 
But in this particular game, the cowboys were behind the, the entire game. They were losing the whole time, but not by very much. And as the game was drawn to the close, he told his friends that he said, I'm still confident the cowboys are going to win. Everybody laughed at him and said, don't be stupid. And he kept on saying, I'm confident, I'm sure of it. Even down to the last minute when they were still behind, he was saying, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. And to everyone's amazement, the Cowboys actually won the game. They actually won a football game. And they asked him, how could you be so confident? I said, it's quite easy. We're watching a recording. I knew the score. I knew what was going to happen. My friends, if we read the last page of Scripture, we know what's going to happen. We know what's going, going to happen. We know the ending. We know the victory. We can have confidence in Jesus Christ. We're not watching a recording. We're living life. But we know what the end's going to be. So why do we fear? Why do we fear? If someone went on that show of Survivor... And the producer came up to them at the start and said, don't worry, whatever happens, you're going to win. They would sail through that. Their confidence would be so high. My friends, as Christians, Jesus tells us that we are winners. And yet we live our lives in defeat. It's time for us to rise up. To not just survive, but to overcome and to thrive. That's what I've seen our young people do. Especially through this time. They haven't only just survived they have thrived and they have struggled in ways but they've come through they've come through if you watch any of this show survivor there's one thing that you'll learn is that your decisions and your actions matter the decisions that you make and the choices that you make really matter in the game and if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, it really matters, my friends. If you're listening at home, if you're sitting here, and you've never ever just said to Jesus, come be part of my life, forgive me my sins, you need to make that decision today. You need to make that decision because your decisions matter. It's an eternity that we're talking about. If you want victory, get G Jesus. If you want life, get Jesus. I want to encourage you to make that important decision today, whether you're here in church or watching online. It's just a matter of asking. Jesus, come in and forgive me. Come in and take my life and help me to overcome everything that comes before me. Help me to thrive. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Just trust him. Have faith in him. And maybe we've made a decision to follow Christ before. But I want to challenge us. Do people see that in our actions? Do people see that in our lives? Do they see that we love Jesus? Because they should. Jesus is supposed to rub off on us. He's supposed to come out of every pore of our body so that people see the grace and the love and the joy that we find in Jesus Christ. We have survived. But I believe God has made us to survive because he has a great plan and a purpose for each one of us. No matter what age we are, God has a plan and a purpose. We have got through this for a purpose, to live life different, to draw a line in the sand and to start again, to go back to Jesus, to go back to the scripture and get to know him. You're not alone. God is with us. And he places you in this church or he, he has got, got you to tune in on, online for a reason. He wants you to be part of a family that helps you through all these things. To continue to learn, to grow, to serve and to support each other. That's how we get through. We are survivors. We are God's children. We are fit for purpose. We are chosen by him. We have won a great prize, eternal life. 
with our Father in heaven. Many of us and many of you will think that you're not enough. You're not enough. But I can tell you that you are enough. You're enough for God because he loves us the way we are. Come just the way you are. We're just thinking if the, if the TV show comes to an end. Most of us don't do this. We switch over very quickly because there's this whole list of credits of all these names of the people who have made this show that we've watched happen. As we finish this worship service, if we were going to have credits coming up at the end, we just say one thing. There would just be one name. It would just say Jesus. Jesus makes it all happen. None of us, no one else, just Jesus. The credits can roll, but the credits has to go to, to God, to his son. And the great thing is, when we believe and we trust and we survive and we win and we move forward with G Jesus in our lives, when those credits stop rolling, it'll never say the end. Those words will never come up. When you believe in Jesus, there is no end, there is eternity. That's the prize. That's what we're looking for. Through his death and resurrection, there's only one name. One name to praise, one name to love, one name to follow, one name to believe in, and one name to live our lives by, and that is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, I just thank you that we're not only survivors, but we're people who can thrive spiritually because you have given us all that we need. I thank you, Lord, for your death on the cross. And I rejoice in your resurrection because that was the victory. And today, Lord, if there's someone who hasn't accepted you as their Lord and Savior, let them do it now, right now. Just say, Father, forgive me. Father, come into my life and change me. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new. And when we say those words, Jesus comes in and his Holy Spirit comes in and you are victorious and you have won. And for all of us who follow and claim to love Jesus, help our actions and our lives to show that. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for all that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand as we sing um, our last song. After we finish singing this, if you want to sit down again, we have a short video just to finish the service off. Uh, there is coffee. There's water and juice out there. Um, please stay around. You can have a chat with some of our young people here at the front who would love to talk to you. Wouldn't you? The answer is yes, Keith. Yeah. All right. So this song's called You Say.